Good morning, Shavuot Tov, Tavach. Thanks for tuning in to the Kila Chari Torah Halacha Minute for Sunday the 24th of January. We've been talking about shoes. There's a Gemara Yerushalmi, which seems to imply that you do not need separate shoes for Shabbat. However, this uh, Yerushalmi uh, is not accepted as conclusive as the last word. Many of the Halachic authorities say that you should have special shoes in honor of Shabbat. Others say it's not necessary, but the prevalent custom is to own two pairs of shoes. <clears throat> Usually in our day and age, most people are able to enjoy the luxury, uh, the uh, probably, uh, almost not un- if not unheard of, <coughs> excuse me, certainly seen as a luxury in uh, days gone by of having two pair of shoes, one for the weekday and uh, one for Shabbat use. If you're someone who owns more than two pair of shoes, <coughs> consider yourself blessed. Uh, the prevalent customers don't own two pair of shoes. If you don't have separate shoes for Shabbos, then you should polish your regular shoes in honor of Shabbat. Many people go away for Shabbos and polish their shoes before the trip. However, Rabbi Judah the Pious, Rabbi Judah Hasid, Germany in the uh, 1200, said that you should not oil your shoes while traveling, and modern-day shoe polish has the same status as oil. So some people don't. Some people follow that instruction. Others maintain that we only keep a few of his instructions. This is not one of them. Uh, <clears throat> of those that observe the directive, some say you can polish your shoes if you're traveling by car. Okay, so uh, if you're concerned about that, we can certainly discuss it further. What about wearing shoes in a public domain uh, in the Rishus Harabim, for those of us who are studying tractate Shabbat, in a place without an Eruv, which is not generally a concern in Toronto, Greater Toronto, which does have a good, reliable Eruv. If a decorative shoe buckle breaks and you intend to repair it, then you should not wear that shoe outdoors. However, if you resolve that you're not going to fix it after Shabbos, it's fine just the way it is, you can then wear that shoe outdoors. It's uh, permitted to walk outside with untied shoelaces because they're considered part of the shoe, they're not a separate entity. However, much better, uh, for if no other reason than safety, to tie the shoelaces. One should not go out on Shabbos with slippers that can fall off. In other words, they don't have a back, slip-ons. Uh, it's permitted if you wear the shoes and they usually don't fall off. You should not go outside on Shabbos wearing only one shoe, but if you're in a pinch, if for some reason you have to go out rush outside and you're wearing mismatched shoes, don't worry, it's okay. If a slipper firmly grips the toe, you can also wear it outside on Shabbos, okay? If this is all exciting to you, stay tuned tomorrow for the Halachas of Galashas, which also sounds a little bit Yiddish, right? The laws of uh, wearing overshoes. We'll talk about that too. Have a good day. Shavuot Tov. A good vach.